powered by Pipe TV. Welcome to Beauty Behold Beauty Transitions powered by Pipe TV, where we discuss everything beauty. Hi, I'm Jill Foster, and I'd like to take a moment to introduce you to my little sis, Dawn Brown's new show. So check out a sneak peek of Chapter 3 with Dawn B, Clarity for Everyday Life, at the end of this episode. I'm Jill Foster, your host, and today I have Chablis Designs here to talk about the beauty in his designs. So with that being said, I want to give you a little bit of background of who Tyrone Chablis is. You know, the old saying goes, one man's trash is another man's treasure, might certainly apply to designer Tyrone Chablis. While growing up in his hometown of Newark, New Jersey, Chablis discovered an old discarded sewing machine and it changed his life. What followed was a path of learning, hard work, and innovation. Initially having taught himself, Tyrone furthered his education at Arts High School in Newark, New Jersey and Trafogen School of Fashion in New York City. He is credited as one of the architects of the still thriving New Jersey fashion show production scene, a major influence on the local fashion culture for more than 30 years. Mm. Chef Lee has been a fixture of the tri-state area fashion scene. He plays many roles from commentator to show producer to master tailor to his most prominent and passionate pursuit designing and making fabulous clothes. His distinctive style is sultry, campy, daring, and edgy. One thing is for certain, when you wear Chablis designs, you feel the freedom of your own personal style and fashion choice. And in case you didn't realize it by now, you don't just drink Chablis, you wear it. So yeah, welcome. Thank you, Jill. How are you? I'm good. <laughs> Welcome. I'm you glad know, to have this... you here on the platform. Finally, I want to get going with some yes. questions because while you have an extensive, extensive background in fashion, over 30 years as the intro um, advised. So I want to get into some of what you've done in those 30 years. So I know that you uh, got started by um, finding an old sewing machine. How old were you when that uh, occurred? What was your age? <laughs> you know, I was in junior high school when that first happened. And okay. actually, I just recently found another sewing machine that okay. I showed and shared with everybody on my, uh, you know, my Instagram and Facebook post. Okay. And I was speaking to one of my good friends, uh, Linda Street, about how long it's been. And it's actually now been over 40 years, Jill. So wow. what's ironic is I just found another machine, mm -hmm. um, a classic um, Mercedes-Benz, a Germany, German made machine. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, and I, I laughed because it was in the trash again, you know? So uh -huh. I'm actually starting over at this present time in my life, 40 years mm -hmm. of doing um, fashion and working with the community, doing showcases and making my own clothes. Uh, you know, trying to have a few businesses, uh, working with the community, being a part of programs, mm -hmm. programming, programming myself. Yeah. What can I tell you, Jill? You yeah, know, I know. It's been an interesting journey and I'm grateful, you know, grateful for it. Yes, yeah. I'm still learning. You never mm -hmm. stop learning. And the uh, college that I went to was a two year associates uh, course it's called Trap Hagen. Oh, a okay. classic school that's in New York City. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, Trap Hagen School of Design. They're no longer there, but that was a historic school yeah. for designers. And some mm -hmm. of the greats went there. Yeah, it was a good oh, school. Okay, well, thanks for uh, correcting uh, my pronunciation because I wasn't sure and I did the best I could. But um, no, cool. I appreciate that. Um, no, so, you did. Yeah, you're also, you know, even in your fashion design, 
I always call you a triple threat. And really, you're a quadruple threat <laughs> because um, not only you, do you design, you commentate and you're a production coordinator and you're on like, uh, you just drop in at any time behind the scenes and you're a vlogger. So now it's like, you know, wow. you're like a quadruple threat. So <laughs> Some um, of my friends told me that. <laughs> like, Tyrone, you know something, you always writing different things and posting stuff up. <laughs> you can consider yourself a blogger too. And I just never claimed to be that. You know, I used yeah. to host a couple of um, um, programs that were cable-based programs. I had a, a personal show of my own, mm -hmm. uh, Tyrone Shapley's. I had another one called Let's Talk. I worked yeah. with uh, Sydney Barnes and we did LSS TV where I would go around and talk to other people about the same thing you're doing right now. Yeah. And, you know, I had a good time doing that. So that's why when you asked me to join you at this, I felt like I was nervous for some reason, you yeah. know, but yeah. I'm here to do it. You know what I mean? It's, it's fun. Yeah. Thank you. It's just me. It's just a little old me. But what what drives you to dip and dab in, in the different things that you do? Because um, what led you to not only um, design, but actually commentate? Can you tell us about the first time you commentated and how you came about doing that? Talking about chills. Talking about an experience. Mm -hmm. You see today I'm outside of my little... Uh, studio in the yard. So, yes. you yeah. know, if you see me squat at something, that's a mosquito, just to let you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, the commentary. My mm -hmm. first show, I was at Rutgers University mm -hmm. and in Newark. Mm -hmm. um, had just got finished with school, too, you know. I show in a collection. I, I like to reinvent uh, t shirts and transform into all new things. That's mm -hmm. who I like to break stuff down and put it back together. Yeah. And yeah. the commentator that was supposed to do the job didn't show up. Wow. And they asked me, uh, how would you feel about talking? I told them, I don't know how to talk. I was nervous as hell. <laughs> but yeah. guess what happened? It was mm -hmm. such uh, a, a, a revolution of me mm -hmm. uh, overcoming my own anxiety. Once I got on the mic, mm -hmm. I just became another person. Yeah. That make any sense? Yeah. I it started talking so things. much stuff. Yeah. yeah, I started talking and talking, and I had slogans in my mind. And, mm -hmm. and I, you know, my thing is, I'm always celebrating others, right? You know, like the other designers, right. bigging them up, the other models, making their names known. And yeah. I always put myself to the side. And I had right. to learn, Tyrone, you have to put yourself up front too sometimes. Yeah, you understand where I'm coming yeah. from? Yeah, like I would big up all the other designers while I'm hosting, mm -hmm. and then I would play myself down because I didn't want it to seem like you're doing this, you're doing that, you know, you're talking, you're right. making your own clothes, right. you're hosting, or you might even create a set for them. Why are you doing all of this stuff? And yeah. what I should have done and what I do now is I embrace it. So what if I could do all of that? Right. Like you're, that. you're a big you know person I mean? um, that pays it forward. Um, even in my uh, personal interaction with you, you know, um, my uh, first love is makeup. And, you know, even when I came out, you were a huge supporter, opening doors for me because you were already in the industry. And I just, you know, I, I continuously prop you up for that because had you oh. not opened those doors for me, I don't know where I would have been today, you know? And- Isn't it you, funny how, isn't it yeah. funny though how God brings people together? Mm -hmm. And at that moment, right. Tawanda Edwards of Just Get Em Entertainment was yeah. out there and I met yeah. her and she had me uh, become a little bit a part of her team. But right. she also supported a fashion show that I was doing right. called Wonders. Remember I had that yeah. show called Wonders? Yeah, and I and, looked like uh, a deer in headlights on the uh, <laughs> on the runway. <laughs> No, you were, I, I, I not almost coerced you into walking, even though yeah. you were a part of the group, you right. came right on in. But you right. saw what was going on. And then yeah. I asked you, what do you do? And you told me, well, you know, I have a makeup company. Right. And I'm like, right. we should be doing makeup. You know I what know. I'm saying? We should be I doing know. what we love. You we know, should be doing you know, what we love. It, it's kind of like what you said about the commentating. You know, you kind of just th stay in the background. And that's where I was. I was into makeup, mm -hmm. but I was still a little um, passive with it. You know, yes. like really, I was passive and embracing 
the gift that um, I had. And, and you were the person that gave me that little nudge or that push. So I thank you to this day for that. But let's get you know back what's to so you. Funny? I wanna, um, oh, I'm sorry. Did you wanna say one more? No, it's question? okay because the platform at that particular time uh, was wide open for everyone to express themselves, you know? Mm -hmm. And I was just trying to get you to see that you were, you didn't have to do what you were doing. You could have been right. doing everything you wanted to do. That's what right. I'm sharing with you. Yeah. So I'm glad you're following up because you're doing so many things. Look at what you're doing. Yeah. It's amazing. <laughs> All of the things you're doing. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. God bless. So, um, so again, getting back to you, I know that you have traveled through the Caribbean and all throughout Europe and I just want um, you to be able to give a little taste of how that kind of influenced um, what you do today. Like, um, how was that experience for you? Well, earlier, you know, now that Black Lives Matter is going on and mm -hmm. a lot of other doors are opening a little bit more, it seemed like because of certain situations of change. Mm -hmm. Back then, we all had to work twice as hard at yeah. stuff that we wanted to do. And being a part of uh, Fashion Week in Paris or Fashion Week uh, in Milan or overseas was, you know, somebody that you've known and the big money that came along with some of those programs. When I was in school, I had got an opportunity to travel with a friend, uh, Kadal Wilson, who used to uh, be in St. Croix, who lived in St. Croix and actually had a, he worked doing that, uh, what was that show back in the day? Um, dang. Oh, I really want to share it with you. But it was a, a comedy show, not a comedy show, it was a variety show. And they had a model on there who she, she was just winning, 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 winning. And that's what he would do. He would be involved in programs like that. And that's what afforded me to go and travel with them and show my, my clothes. And, and, and it was great because I had someone who was trying to help me get where I needed to go. You know what I'm saying in the industry and it's just different roles that just you just have to take. And sometimes we, we land at the right one and sometimes we have to go to the next one. Yeah. But that's just a part of the journey. You know what I mean? Yeah, I can understand good. that. That that had to good. be like a, a wonderful experience. Some of your um, inspirations, legendary inspirations, are Patrick Kelly, Alexander McQueen, and Edith My boys. Head. And so yes. um, you don't have to break down each and every one of them, but which one um, can you like um, share some of their techniques that really, really um, stands out as in, 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 in influencing what you do? Which one of them? Both of them are great. Okay. Patrick Kelly, God, mm -hmm. God rest both of them. God bless and rest their souls. They're mm -hmm. no longer here. Like Carl Lackerfeld, mm -hmm. these guys are, creative Carl Eckerfeld had ran so many different houses with his fashion lines and mm -hmm. all those jobs he held but he did it Chanel he did it you know yeah. Alexander McQueen I, I'm just amazed at how he can just take nothing mm -hmm. and make it something you mm -hmm. understand mm -hmm. um, being uh, the artist that he was he reminds me a lot of myself mm -hmm. where he doesn't like to be always up front but he lived the edge his fashion spoke volumes when you saw them. A lot of people don't always like what a, some, uh, I couldn't them an artist do their fashion. But you know what, he left, he left an impression on me that I will ever, never forget. I just spoke of him the other day, uh, yeah. talking yeah. out loud, telling him how much I wish he was here. You know, yeah. because these people, they inspire you. Patrick yeah. Kelly, Black Art, the first black designer to go to Paris to show right. a collection. Right. One of them, right. black designers who, um, you know, the big buttons on clothes, the statement maker pieces. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? The yeah. colors that he used, tribal, some of the symbols. I saw I saw some buttons that he had just recently on some of the clothes in the past. Today, mm -hmm. they would um, take those designers that were putting up the red lips, the yeah. black faces, yeah. and call them out. But then I'm looking, I'm saying, well, he did this years ago. Right. So what's the right. difference between him doing it versus the people today right. because I believe the way that they're doing it symbolizes something that's not of the culture do you understand it's yes. more racist yes. than it was art right you know, you know looking at his fashion do you understand yeah. where I'm coming from yeah so I was I'm torn but now I understand right. one thing I learned mm -hmm. now that's why you see a rack of clothes behind me today yeah. is to bring some yeah. stuff out to show you that 
It's all about involving and moving on and taking these little things that you see from others. I never like to look at other designers' clothes because right. I don't want to copy you. I don't like to copy people. I like to try to be an original. Does that make any sense? Yes, it but makes a lot have, of you sense. You do have to and, look. And speaking of that, I want to parlay into the fact that you are, you mentioned something how you see how someone can take nothing and turn it into something. You're big on going green and facility oh, yes. and that sort of thing. Can you speak to that a little bit? I'm, I just got invited to do uh, work with, along with um, Bridget Ortiz, mm -hmm. Rick Davey of Brooklyn Fashion Week. And they're doing this weekend coming in for September, uh, September Fashion Sustainable Fashion Week. Wow. So it's the same yeah. stuff. And when I took her to clothes, she was blown away. Uh, uh, you know, how I take things. Let me just show you. Yeah. Apart. Bring it <laughs> on Take in. things apart, right? And oh, that's gorgeous. And transform them into something else. A brand new total look, sustainable, the same thing. T-shirts mixed with colors. Uh, rouging on the side, you see that? Yes, that uh, is gorgeous. All the kind of stuff. So just yeah. like I said with you, you know, it's just it's just what I like to do. It's just uh -huh. it's just a part of what I do. And now with this this whole mask thing, right. we got to do everything based on that. But this is how all pretty is that? That's gorgeous. Thank you. All sustainable fashion. All sustainable. Yes. Yes. Made from something else and transform it to something else. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's just it's just fun. I enjoy doing. I enjoy taking things apart and putting it back together. Trust me. Uh -huh. Yeah, you hit on this already um, about how you you're always cultivating other folks in the industry. You have the the best heart ever. You really, really Thank do. Thank you, Jill. And um, okay. I just want to big up you for a moment because I wrote a book. And I want the viewing audience to know that this book uh, was published uh, just about, I guess a little under two years now, or maybe just about two years time is flying. Yes. And okay. I had to big up uh, Tyrone in this book because as I share it with you guys, he was someone who really nudged me. He pushed me out of my comfortable state of hiding behind my gift wow. and he wow. threw me right into the mix of things. And sometimes it just takes a person like that, you know, in everybody's life to be able to do that. So I wanna take just a moment and read the dedication because you know, and, and, and express to all of you who are viewing this that- I might start to, crying too. You have to, you know, thank those who have, you know, stepped out on faith because of you and your gift. Thank you. So when this book came out, he was the first uh, thank you of someone that I interacted with in the industry. And I wrote, I thank the man that God placed in my life at the right time. When I was just kicking off my makeup career, it was you, Tyrone Shevely, who made it wow. your own personal job to open doors for me. I often wonder where I'd be without your support of me early on, and I sincerely thank you. You are not only a wonderful triple threat, we already explained he's a quadruple threat, <laughs> in the fashion industry as a designer, commentator, production coordinator, and a vlogger. I want wow. you to know that you are a triple or a quadruple threat in my heart as my wonderful friend, you are oh, selfless Jesus. with your care and concern for others and their careers. I love and adore you today you and too, forever. Jill. Because, I love you too, Jill. Yeah, I just Thank think you. that what you did for me back then was uh, fabulous. You're gonna make me cry. I'm already teary-eyed and my oh. eyes are red already. <laughs> I, I <laughs> and if you see something drop, don't say nothing. It's you know what? To well, an end. We um, have to pay, pay it forward, though. We have to pay yeah. what we do forward. And we must help others. And what you're doing right now, yeah. you just paid, you paid it back. Yeah. How many times can I say thank you? Yeah. This right here is a moment in time. Yeah. You know? And we have to cherish this. I'm yeah. grateful for this time. We, we, thank we you for do. sharing. Sharing what I mean to you and to others. Yeah. And, you know, I'm not going to stop helping people. Right. But, you know? 
because if they can get where they got to go, then they're going to help me get where I need to be. That's you right. Where I'm and that's what life is all about. That's what we're, we're truly here for. So I thank God for you that you walk in that every single thank day. Um, I, we are running out of time and I want to make sure that people are able to get in contact with you or know how to follow you. Um, in that you can first share what's on the horizon and then if you can be so kind as to give your social media platforms before we close out. Well, as you know, a lot of programs were canceled for the year mm -hmm. and I just had to also um, let go of a couple of programs because the virus is still here. Yeah. I hate talking about that virus, but it, it just put a damper on some things. I'm doing a lot of virtual stuff right now. And the next program coming up again would be the Sustainable Fashion Week. So look forward to Sustainable Fashion Week. Uh, that's Bridget Artiste and Rick Davey of Brooklyn Fashion Week. That's okay. what we're working on for September. I'm working along with Jersey City Fashion Week, Disha Jackson. She's still doing her program. And I'm helping also um, Ms. Cheryl Murphy. She's doing the, we did the Jersey City um, Carnival. I've taken over as a director of fashion for Jersey oh, City Carnival. Okay. So okay. I look for designers to showcase their collections in this catwalk that we do and a parade. Now this year we didn't do the big street parade that holds like 40, 50,000 people because we had to go virtual. But next right. year, right. looking forward to everybody joining me. And that's including you with makeup <laughs> and your talented, you know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Group of divas that you work with. Pipe yeah. TV is a beautiful yeah. uh, platform. I hope to have you guys in the house too. Oh, and okay. uh, Facebook, Tyrone Chablis. That's T-Y-R-O-N-E. Chablis, like the wine. C-H-A-B-L-I-S. You mm -hmm. don't drink it, you wear it. That's Instagram, Facebook, uh, Pinterest, all of those fabulous places that we go. One yeah. name, you don't need yeah. more. You can Google it if you want. Tyrone Chablis. And it'll take you where you need to be. You know, that's it. Got well, thank you so much for joining um, Beauty Behold Beauty Transitions platform to beautiful. share the beauty of Shabley Designs. I want to thank my viewing audience. And until the next time, I'm Jill Foster, your host. Be blessed. Bye. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Tyrone. Thank you. Bye, Jill. Thank you. Hi. I'm Dawn Brown, the host of the fabulous new YouTube show, Chapter 3 with Dawn B, Clarity for Everyday Life. We told you it was coming, and here it is. Hi, and welcome to Chapter 3 with Dawn B. I'm your host, Dawn Brown, and I'd also like to welcome you to a special Big Sis Toast to me. So without further ado, let me introduce you to my absolutely wonderful big sister, Jill Foster. She is the founder and owner of Beauty Behold Makeup Artistry. She's also an author, and I can't even, the list goes on and on. Without further ado, here she is, my big sis, Jill Foster. Thank you for having me on your show, Dawn. I'm so excited to be here. And when I learned that you were having the show or, or you launched the show, and after I saw the first episode, I was like, I have to post my little sis. But just for the viewing audience, I want you guys to get to know a little bit about my little sis. She is not little by far. She's only little because she was born into this earth after me and our other two sisters. So she is the baby of four uh, daughters that my mother gave birth to, but uh, she's not little by far. She uh, holds her ground, you know, um, cousins used to pick on her. So she had gotten that vibrancy at a young age to stand up for herself, mm -hmm. and speak her mind, and she'll she'll literally rip a hole in someone. <laughs> I just want to let y'all know that, okay? So while I may preference her as my little sister, she's not little by far. I am here to toast her, so you got your glass, honey bud. I got my glass. Okay. <laughs> I just want to point y'all off. This is we we have this apple martini thing. This is a proper apple martini. You must have your maraschino <laughs> cherry. Okay. Look, I wasn't gonna be able to finish all those cherries. 
So I'll, <laughs> I'll go everywhere. Okay, but um, trust me, the kettle one is in there. All right? There you go. There you go. Everybody That's right. That's there. right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so toast to you, sissy. Thank you, sissy. Clean, clean. New platform, which is entitled Chapter Three, would dawn be clarity for everyday life. Yes, and mm -hmm. um, with that being said, I'm gonna just pivot right on over to her to explain to you all what this um, uh, show is all about. Take it away. Really quickly, I will tell you that chapter three is, is for me. Chapter one was raising, getting married and raising my family. Chapter two was getting remarried, my last marriage, and blending our families together. Now, we're 10 years in and chapter three is for me to start walking in my purpose and doing what I know the Lord has called me to do. Right. So I decided to start chapter three with Dawn B, Clarity for Everyday Life, just to give Christian women age 40 and above a safe space to come and talk about the everyday things that they go through in life. Right. Um, many times we think that we have to be a certain way as women of God. We have to make everything just so, we have to be just, just we have to say everything just so, we have to be so poised and proper, but we know that that's not always the case because we live in the real world that's where right. our men are being shot down and hunted in the streets where we fear for our children going into the street every day, worrying about whether they're going home. We're in the age of COVID. We have all of this, um, jobs are being lost, uh, stress. You know, we're worried about whether our voting uh, rights are going to be respected. So I don't know about you, but those are the types of things. I'm, I'm not warm and fuzzy when I think about those things. 